What is going on guys, it's your boy Edward V and in this video we're going to look at exercise and the importance of exercise for burning body fat. People like to simplify things when it comes to body fat. They don't like to look at the hormonal aspects and they don't like to look at the metabolic aspects of it. They like to simply create a mathematical equation of calories in versus calories out. And yes, calories in versus calories out are important, but the body is incredibly nuanced. And in this video, I'm going to break down why it is incredibly beneficial for you to utilize exercise to help you facilitate more fat burning. And I'm going to go ahead and break it down in this video. Stay tuned. So your body uses the three macronutrients that you consume for energy. It uses carbs, fats, and proteins. However, carbs and fats are the primary used energy in your body when you're exercising, when you're doing aerobic or anaerobic exercises. Although some people believe that protein gives them energy, so they eat all of this protein so they can have energy and their muscles have energy. In reality, what protein is truly doing is just doing the muscle repair process. The things that are helping you exert energy, even within the muscle, are actually the carbohydrates and the fats. The muscle repair protein is in the mix, but at a very small percentage, like maybe 5%, and it is simply because it is doing muscle repair within the workout, within the exercise, actually trying to repair micro tears in the muscle that happen because of intensive movement. And yes, exercise helps you create a caloric deficit and the consumption of food is where most of the calorie control for the day will come about. Exercising can only do so much in energy expenditure as you raise your heart rate, but it can't do too much if your diet is incredibly poor and you're still eating over your caloric needs for the day. You will still be at a net positive energy balance, which means you can either stay the same or gain some weight. But what doesn't get talked about much is how exercise actually facilitates a huge platform for you to burn more calories over time. So you're burning more body fat over time. You see, the way the body works is that it efficiently switches between carbohydrates and fat utilization for energy. Utilizing glucose for quick bursts and high intensity workouts, and then utilizing fats for longer duration workouts or for lower intensity workouts. You see, there's something called the adenosine triphosphate, which is the ATP. This is the organic chemical that stores and transports chemical energy in your body. And it utilizes things like glucose that comes from carbohydrates and fats that comes from the macronutrient fats, as well as the fatty acids in your body to create that chemical energy, to store it and shoot it out as quickly as possible. See, ATP doesn't last for a long time. So in its formation, it is also trying to use the energy as quickly as possible. There are certain levels and time frames where it decides to switch from one substrate to the other. If you're doing a 100 meter sprint, for example, depending on how fast you run that sprint, you could actually do it in an anaerobic state, which means you are not utilizing oxygen. What's used during the anaerobic state is carbohydrates. The glucose, glycolysis, is utilized to complete this 100 meter dash. You are sprinting at full efficiency because your body is using the more metabolic efficient compound, which is glucose. The only problem with glucose is that it is incredibly finite and can be depleted, in which at that point your body switches to body fat. But the reason why your body tries not to use body fat as much as possible because it isn't as metabolically efficient as carbohydrates. It takes a longer process and it's an aerobic exercise, which means it utilizes oxygen. So oxygen has to be taken in, has to be put into the mix, then the ATP can trigger and then start sending those signals to energize your body. And that process is slower than if it was to use the carbohydrate substrate. So hopefully you understand aerobic is oxygen based and aerobic is not oxygen based. If you do things that are low to moderate intensity, your body will most likely use fats because you're moving so slow and you're, and you're basically requesting this energy at such a slow rate that your body can efficiently use the body fat to do that. 
When you do things from moderate to high intensity, your body tries to use glucose because moderate to high, you're requesting this energy in a much faster pace because you're exerting more energy by utilizing faster movements. Now, you can be doing one thing and still use both glucose and fats as you switch from one substrate to the other. And this can be, for example, when you're running and doing a jog. If you're starting a jog, you will notice that you are incredibly comfortable in the beginning. That's because you are in an anaerobic state when you start your jog. As you start to hit that threshold, within a matter of a few minutes, that's when your body starts to utilize oxygen. And actually, if you keep doing this, your VO2 max, your volume oxygen maximum, starts to get better. You start to be able to pull in more oxygen when you're running. And the more oxygen you can put into your lungs, the more effective you are doing the aerobic exercise and utilizing the fats for energy. Because the less efficient you are, the closer you get to that lactic acid threshold, and then you hit what is called a wall where you can't even move anymore, where your body is completely collapsing because it has no ability to provide effective energy to you. So you're probably saying to yourself, well, then I should just do low intensity exercises. But this is where calorie expenditure comes into play. Although you are exclusively burning fat, you tend to still burn less fat because the calorie burn from high intensity where your heart rate is pumping at almost 80% of your max heart rate, you're burning so much calories that it encompasses body fat burning as well and you end up still burning more body fat within the same time frame. So 30 minutes of low intensity versus 30 minutes of high intensity, 30 minutes of high intensity will still burn more fat overall. So keep that in mind. Now you're probably saying to yourself, that's all great and thank you for explaining that, but how does exercise help me burn more fat in the long run? Well, here it is. Exercise creates the pillars that allow your body to be more effective at burning body fat. How does it do this? Well, for one, you improve oxygen extraction. And when you're doing this, it helps your cells actually burn more fat. You become more effective at tapping into your fat because you've become better at extracting oxygen. Your VO2 max has increased, so you can take in more oxygen and utilize that. So you're burning more fat more effectively. If you've ever noticed, if you do aerobic exercise consistently, you tend to be able to breathe better. You don't get the shortness of breath from doing normal things like going up the stairs so easily. That is because you've become more efficient at extracting oxygen and this reciprocates to burning more fat. And also the blood circulation, your resting heart rate, Depending on how low you can get your resting heart rate would mean how efficient each pump is. So if you have a 50 beats per minute resting heart rate, that means you are more efficient than someone who has a 60 beats per minute resting heart rate or a 70 beats per minute resting heart rate because that would mean that someone who has 70 beats per minute resting heart rate, it takes them 70 beats to get the efficiency of your 50 beats that could create that blood flow across the entire body. And what does this do for you? Well, as I've explained in my previous videos about losing fat, because the triglycerides are pulled from the fat cells, broken up, the fatty acids are attached to a protein called albumin that travels to the energy source or the source that needs energy, the muscle source that needs energy, for example, or the organ source that needs energy. But if you have poor blood flow, it can actually travel and get there so late that the muscle tissue or the organ no longer needs the energy. And because it was so inefficient, it couldn't get there in time and your body actually intelligently takes that fatty acid, turns it back into a triglyceride and restores it into a fat cell. So although you were in that fat oxidation process, you never actually burned the fat. It came right back around and stored itself in the adipocyte, which is the fat cell. So this improved blood flow actually makes you more efficient at ensuring that you're burning body fat. It increases the number of mitochondria in your body. And this is a cell that helps facilitate energy usage. This is an energy compound cell. So these things help facilitate more fat burning. And all of this comes from aerobic and anaerobic exercises. Yes, calories matter, but putting your body in a state hormonally and metabolically where you're burning more fat than the next person simply because you have all these pillars intact over time, over the course of a month, two months, three months, you'll be burning so much more fat than someone else who's just focusing on calorie restriction and calorie intake. Also, building muscle, working out, actually lifting weights, resistance training. 
those things help as well. Although they're not burning more calories in the moment, they create other pillars that help you burn fat moving forward. The thing you have to understand is muscle is incredibly metabolically active. It's one of the most metabolically active things in your body and it's actually the primary driver for your metabolic rate. So if you want to ensure that although you're at a caloric restriction, which can create metabolic adaptation, adaptive thermogenesis, where your body understands that this is how much calories it's going to get and it kind of brings everything to a level where it can work off of those calories that you're taking in and subsequently makes it harder for you to lose weight because your body has accepted these new calories and you'll have to go below that just to keep burning more calories. Ensuring that you're retaining muscle and building muscle actually ensures that you keep driving your metabolic rate. It's the primary driver to your metabolic rate is muscle tissue. So you always want to make sure that you are keeping muscle on your body or you are building muscle. And if you are overweight or detrained or you haven't really gone to the gym, you can actually build muscle and still lose body fat at the same time due to calorie partitioning. And remember when resistance training, the most important thing is compound movements. You want to trigger as much muscle in the body as you can. So bench pressing, dips, pull-ups, squats, deadlifts. These are all great compound movements that trigger multiple muscle groups so that you can be efficient in your workouts. Isolation workouts like dumbbell curls are not going to be as effective as compound movements for hypertrophy, which means building muscle. So there you have it guys. The importance of exercise to burning body fat. It's more than just the current energy expenditure number that you're getting per exercise each day. You have to step back and look at the bigger picture. People want to simplify weight loss and body fat loss to calories in versus calories out, but there are things that you can do to your body metabolically and hormonally that facilitates more energy expenditure. It's more nuanced and goes deeper than just the simple calorie in calorie out model. I hope this video was very informative for you guys. And of course, I want to thank my patrons for my Patreon. And I'm going to go ahead and put their names right up here. And of course, as always, guys, I'll see you on Sunday for another FAQ. Peace!